Hello there, good day, and you're welcome to DLI channel. DLI stands for Development, Empowerment, and Leadership Initiative. My name is Bumi, and um, usually I'm behind the camera, but today we will be talking about brands that used to be, but are no more. Over the last couple of weeks, Simak has been talking to you about organizational life cycle, how organizations progress from the startup phase to the growth phase to the maturity phase. And at, that, at the point of maturity, there are two other ways that you can go. It's either you have a rebirth and you keep growing or you keep going on the decline. So this week, we just want to take a look at some brands that used to be and have real life examples. Let's take it away from the theory and have real life, real life examples of some of these brands so that the, this can bring the conversation nearer home and hopefully it can help you along your journey. The first example we'll consider is BlackBerry. BlackBerry, as we all know it, is a very premium brand. But before they became premium, they were initially known as Research in Motion, founded in 1984 by a group of students in Canada. And their original aim was basically to provide a wireless data connection service. And so they started manufacturing and selling pages. Despite the fact that they didn't have competitors, they innovated and made a two-way beeper. After that, they, they kept progressing, pushing the boundaries, and they came up with the very first QWERTY keyboard BlackBerry smartphone in 2002. By 2005, BlackBerry had built a solid subscriber base of 4 million users worldwide. They released the BBM as a BlackBerry Messenger, and it looked like they were on the high. They were... They were moving swiftly. They were, they were appealing to corporate workers. In fact, it was, BBM was a free service for, that was exclusive to just BlackBerry phones. And this attracted a whole lot more people to using BlackBerry. And by the end of the year when BBM was unveiled, BlackBerry had amassed over 12 million subscribers. And they had a net worth of $67 billion. However, in 2007 iPhone came up as a major competitor. And initially, they were looking at, at iPhone as a small company that is just trying to come up and didn't even stand a chance against the big giant BlackBerry. And for all they cared, in fact, the CEOs were like, oh, no, 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 we are fine. We do not have a problem. But interestingly, at that point where they, where they were on the high, where they had matured and they were successful and they were commanding a, huge, a, a larger percentage of the subscriber base in the market. It was at this point they should have started re-strategizing and started thinking of, okay, what else can we do? What better thing can we do? What else can we introduce? What do people want in a bid to rebrand, re-strategize and remain competitive in the market? However, what did they do? They rested on their oars. They were very comfortable with the fact that, no, nothing can beat them. Nobody can beat them. But however, in, 2000, in 2018, here we are now. iPhone is commanding a percentage of the market. Meanwhile, the BlackBerry that used to command a larger percentage of the market now commands 0.0 percentage of subscribers in the smartphone market. The second example we would consider is the Acepso soap. Acepso probably sounds very unfamiliar now, but it used to be a household name in Nigeria way back in the 90s. Acepso was the soap to go for if you had any skin irritation, any discoloration on your skin that you needed to take care of. Acepso was the soap. It was practically the only antibacterial soap then. After a while, competition came, and they could not find a way to respond to competition. Interestingly, they were, so, they were actually so successful that almost every home had an Acepso soap in it. But at that point where they were on the high, you know, they, they also started as a business. They, they went through the growth phase. 
and then they matured. But at that point when they matured, where they should have been thinking of other things to do, other ways to expand, competition came and they couldn't even, they couldn't react to it, they couldn't even respond. And that led to them being silenced into the background. Yes, they are still in existence right now, but it's not a soap you will easily find in the market to say, oh, I'm going to the market to buy a Sepso soap. And the next example we'd like to consider, probably the last, is Nokia. Nokia was a very, very strong phone. It was probably one of the very first set of phones to be manufactured. It was very strong, highly durable, long battery life. And, you know, they made a lot of money. They were very successful. And by the time competition came and even by the time demands, the customer's demands started changing based on what was now existing in the market, people wanted a phone that could do more than make a phone call and send text messages. People wanted a phone that they could start working on, a phone that could connect to the internet, a phone that could do a lot more than phone call SMS. But Nokia felt no. Our phones are very strong. They are very durable. What more? What more could you possibly want than a phone that you can actually use for a lifetime? But by 2013, Microsoft bought Nokia over. And how many Nokia phones do we even have in the market now? Not so much anymore. Now, the whole essence of this is that as a brand, you need to ensure that when you move from the startup phase to the growth phase, when you mature, that is a point where you actually need to be more careful and at that point you need to start strategizing on what should be the next thing. It's not to rest on your ass to say, oh, we are now successful, we are big, nobody can play in our space. That is not the time for that because as the world keeps changing, inventions are coming on, people are innovating things as much as possible. It will be ideal if you really want to keep your brand successful and alive for a very long time to start strategizing once you hit that level. And by doing that, you start a higher chance of building an, ent an enterprise that will last. Thank you for joining us this week. Once again, my name is Bumi. Next week, please join TMAC as we continue the conversation. And please remember to subscribe, like the video, share. As many people need to hear this as possible, please share it to them. Thank you for joining us and see you next time. Bye.